Hello there from your certified professional life coach for Thrive the Matrix coming to you with the next video essay in the series, I'm a Narc, Get Me Out of Here, Celebrity Edition. Today we'll be discussing President Obama's outreach outrage to win black male votes as an example of a masterclass in gaslighting a coercive control technique. Keep in mind, I am a certified professional life, happiness, and CBT therapy coach, not a clinician, and thus we always theorize, never diagnose, and absolutely never theranose. We are speculating and informing based on experience and education, not a clinical evaluation of the subject. This distinction also applies to the distinguished 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama. On October 10, 2024, Obama attended a campaign event for Kamala Harris addressing black voters in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At this event, he took a moment to speak directly to, not with, in my humble opinion, black men. Before we take a closer look at what he had to say, it's important to discuss gaslighting as what he said and how he said it is a prime example of this tactic in action. That's to say, so in so much as it fits the description in its obviousness, not in its effectiveness. Coercive control tactics like gaslighting are typically used in the context of narcissistic abuse, and we are certainly not suggesting that is the case here. A tactic in isolation is not abuse, although perhaps the argument could be made that it is an abuse of trust. Black men and many Americans revere Barack Obama and give much weight to his words. He was trusted by the American people and duly elected president for two terms. Use of tactics like gaslighting by those in a position of authority with the power to influence is a violation of sorts. Elected officials, not least of which past presidents, fit this description. Gaslighting is defined as manipulating someone into questioning their own reality, a deception of one's memory, perception of reality as mentioned, or mental stability. The gaslighter puts forth a false narrative in order to manipulate, and the gaslighted individual struggles to maintain their autonomy vis-a-vis -vis the ability to make their own decisions or conclusions based on their interpretation of the facts. In essence, their reality. Gaslighting is typically effective only when there is an unequal power dynamic or when the gaslighted has shown respect to the gaslighter. Gaslighting is distinctive in that the gaslighter attempts to negate the other's perception, insisting they are wrong, are irrational, or are dysfunctional. This is done not to persuade someone, as in the case of a political argument, but rather to manipulate an intended action or reaction. Given this review, let's take a closer look at what President Obama had to say. We have not seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say this seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. You're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses, and I've got a problem with that. Part of me thinks, well, you're just not feeling the idea of having a woman as president, and you're coming up with other reasons and alternatives for that. When we get in trouble and the system isn't working for us, they're the ones out there marching and protesting. These statements truly are a masterclass in the use of gaslighting. One of the most striking aspects of what the president said is that he's not asking the audience to share or consider what they're feeling. He's telling them you're not or you are coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses rather than wanting to vote for a woman as president. One must ask, how does he know this? What is the basis for this matter of fact assumption? In essence, he is imposing his ideas on what their reality is in the absence of fact. What's so scary is that there is an unequal power dynamic and the gaslighted audience is deferential to the gaslighter. This makes this telling, irresponsible, and condescending at best and manipulative at worst. President Obama is also telling the audience that he is displeased or has a problem with this reality, in essence, suggesting it is truth and then admonishing the audience for it. This is how you're really feeling. As someone you trust, you ought to address it. In his appeal, Obama also labels any legitimate reasons for not wanting to vote for Kamala Harris as reasons and excuses. No one wants to be seen making excuses, and use of the word excuse and reason could be seen as an attempt for the audience to equate them as the same. They most certainly are not. The two words have completely different meanings, and conflating them is confusing and, again, just plain manipulation. Obfuscating someone's legitimate, at least to them, beliefs as excuses minimizes them and is an effective way to make someone question themselves. Imagine saying to yourself, I thought I did have sound opinions based on my experience and evaluation of reality. I didn't want to vote for Kamala Harris because I didn't agree with her economics, but maybe I'm just making excuses and risking making the right decision 
not least of which the history in electing the first woman president. In his statement, Obama seems to further attempt to erode the black male audience trust in itself, but in essence labeling them bad and throwing in a bait and switch with some good old fashioned guilt to position women and by proxy Kamala Harris as the opposite, good and just. After all, when we as black men screw up or get screwed by the system, it's our women who are, or women who are out there fighting for us. How disrespectful. This again assumes that the men in the audience either A, get in trouble, or B, are victims of the system. What information about the audience, the individuals, does Obama have to support this? It makes one ask, whose beliefs and opinions are based on reality and whose reality is based in broad generalizations, irrational assumptions, and emotion? What makes this so dangerous is that in the event that any in the audience have experienced these things, it can be very effective in altering perception. Again, imagine saying to yourself, wait a second, I, I have been in trouble with the law. I've been wrongfully treated, and here I am making excuses not to vote for the very people that are there for me when I need them most. I feel awful. I'm glad that Obama, whom I respect, pointed this out before it's too late. This is why this tactic, when effective as it so often is, is so dangerous. Thankfully, simple reality testing can be a helpful tool in holding on to your reality or adjusting it when it makes sense to do so. What does this look and sound like? It simply means an exercise in comparing the argument with the facts. In the hypothetical example of the black man who decided not to vote for Kamala Harris because of her economics, reality testing may include, why don't I agree with her economics? Well, right now I'm struggling to pay the pills. I'm working two jobs. These aren't excuses, they're facts. And why isn't it about voting for a woman? Come to think of it, I voted for Hillary Clinton or... I didn't vote for Hillary Clinton, but the majority of black men didn't, and they may vote for Kamala Harris again. How can there be an inherent bias against women after considering this? Always test as many of your lived facts, decisions, and attitudes as you can when being told why you feel a certain way or are doing a certain thing. After all, you're the best one to know why. I won't pretend like the former president did to know the reality of those in the audience, but there are plenty of facts out there that could be used to reality test who you decide to vote for, no matter whom that might be. Perhaps a reevaluation might make you consider Obama's theory and conclude it's true. That very well may be for you. You'll hear many say even a broken clock is right twice a day. Obama's no different. Otherwise, instead of presenting a compelling argument for earning votes in good faith, he's made the following assumptions. You aren't voting for Kamala Harris because you have a problem with women. Any reasons you have are excuses. I think these things and how I feel are your facts. Black men are either in trouble or the victims of a system targeting them. Black men are forsaking the women who bail them out. Even in the absence of reality testing, stated matter-of-factly and evaluated on its face, this attempt to negate lived experience in favor of adopting an alternate reality of misogyny is someone whose reality is completely aligned, at least in this case, with the very reality they are hoping to inspire. It's also a great example of another coercive control tactic, good old-fashioned projection. For shame, Mr. President.